Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 1st, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Microsoft today released two updates for Windows codec vulnerabilities that do affect Windows 10 as well as Windows Server 2019. Now, of course, no big surprise that Windows 10 and Server 2019 are both affected. They're similar enough and share a lot of libraries. These codec libraries affected by these two vulnerabilities are processing images. So in order to exploit the vulnerability, a victim would have to look at a malicious image that is then able to execute arbitrary code. It's a little bit odd that Microsoft came up with this patch sort of out of order. There is no current exploit known for it. And this vulnerability was found by Abdulaziz Hariri, who was actually part of the Trend Micro Saturday Initiative. So it was reported to Microsoft via the Saturday Initiative. Microsoft does state that this update should be applied automatically via the Microsoft Store. You could theoretically trigger it manually if you don't want to wait for the automatic patch to kick off. But well, a lot of malware these days, of course, doesn't really rely on any vulnerabilities like this in order to execute code. It just tricks the user into doing so. And that, of course, is operating system independent. And yes, I do have some new Mac malware to talk about. Malwarebytes wrote this up. And the reason you may be infected with this latest Mac malware is if you installed LittleSnip, uh, very popular and very good uh, firewall software for Mac OS uh, from a torrent. So the trick here is that the attacker is trying to trick you into installing this supposedly free version of a little snitch. Usually you have to pay for it, but instead of installing a little snitch, you actually install a ransomware. This ransomware is sort of tricky, maybe a little bit too tricky in some ways for its own good. It will only start encrypting your file after three days. I'm not really sure why they're waiting three days in order to kick off the encryption process, but that's what Malwarebytes served. Then we have a sort of interesting vulnerability in a popular software development kit that's used by a number of uh, VPNs, uh, the Anchor Free VPN SDK. It's uh, used in particular by antivirus vendors that sort of added VPN capability uh, to their software. And a researcher found uh, interesting privilege escalation vulnerability in this software. Now, I have to say, uh, overall, I don't think that's sort of a terrible, exciting vulnerability in order to exploit an attacker has to have access to the system as a regular user. And then, of course, installing and running a VPN often does require some kind of elevated privilege in order, for example, to adjust routing rules. And uh, some VPNs, like, for example, OpenVPN or so, even explicitly allow you to run little scripts to help with the startup procedure as an elevated user. Originally, the problem was identified in Bitdefender's implementation of the VPN, but since it actually involved that library that a number of vendors are using, the entire disclosure process took a while and the vendor now has released patches. And well, looks like sort of the fake security software and feature thing is a little bit back. We just uh, talked about little snitch or a fake version of that being used to trick users to install malware. Sophos has sort of something similar, a phishing scam that claims to help you to enable secure DNS or DNS sec. Apparently, WordPress bloggers and others are receiving uh, those phishing emails. Kind of interesting, when you click on the phishing email, the landing page sort of automatically adapts itself to adopt the look and feel of the hosting company. They're 
basically targeting here or if you are a WordPress user, it sort of gives you a WordPress uh, login form. And then of course, well, uh, they ask you for your username and password and that's what they're really after here. Ever heard of two-factor authentication? Probably a good thing to prevent attacks like this. This is in particular for sort of a not very knowledgeable, somewhat knowledgeable user that may have heard about DNS issues and DNSSEC, uh, they may be enticed into falling for scams like this. Well, and this is it for today. There were a bunch of Netgear vulnerabilities, but kind of tired of them. So uh, just uh, update your Netgear routers. Other than that, uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.